Here is my prediction. AI is going to be the biggest trend of 2024 and going forward in this decade. Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma. I started learning about machine learning and AI back in 2019 and 2020. And today, this field is booming like never before. With the launch of ChatGPT and other generative AI applications, there is so much demand for AI engineers. And because of that, if you want to become one, this video is the one you need to watch. We even launched Centora, which was a generative AI app last year. I'll share with you everything you need to learn to become an AI engineer from zero to building generative AI applications in the next 20 minutes. We'll break it into steps talking about the exact free courses that you can take and become an AI engineer for completely free. And if that sounds exciting, hit the like button and subscribe and let's start with the topic of today's video, how I would learn AI and machine learning in 2024 if I had to start all over again. The most important thing to understand is what is AI or machine learning? The basic definition is machine learning is a process through which a system can recognize patterns and predict future outcomes. That is the basic idea of it. So imagine you have a black box, you first give it an input and you tell what the outcome is. And hence you are training this black box. What happens next is it tries to identify patterns between the input and the output. And once you've given it enough training data, you then ask it a question. And then you ask it to give you an outcome and a probability for that outcome. And that is what machine learning is all about. Again, you don't need to stress about anything. We'll break everything down into steps in the next few minutes. The first important thing to learn is going to be maths. Maths will be the foundation upon which you will build all of your learnings. So the most important thing to learn in maths will be calculus, differentiation and integration, understanding about linear algebra, and lastly, probability. You need to have an intuitive idea of what these things really mean. First of all, you should understand integral calculus and differentials. You should understand how matrices really work and what is the dot product of two matrices. And at the end, you should understand about probability. Probability is going to be very important as we move on because any result that a model gives is not a yes or no. It is a probability. It will say that I think this photo looks like a dog. The probability of that is 0.95. I think this photo does not look like a dog. The probability for that is 0.98. All of this is very simple. You can learn it from three blue, one brown's videos on calculus as well as matrices and probability. Or you can go to Khan Academy or Free Code Camp has some amazing videos on mathematics. So go and have a look at those. It's very simple. And once you understand the basics of maths, now we can move on to the next step, right? Now, all of the things that we are learning in maths, we'll be applying when we'll be building these machine learning models, when we will be training these models, when we will get an outcome from this model. So it's all going to be relevant, stick around till the end. The second step is to learn about Python. Now, Python is the most used programming language, I think in this age after JavaScript maybe, and it's super easy to learn. It's similar to English. I learned it myself in 2019. I even taught Python to thousands of students back in 2020 and 21 on an academy. So it's a very simple language to learn, right? I taught it to school kids. If you're in college, you can very simply learn it. Now Tech with Tim has a great playlist, which will give you the basic idea of Python, or you can also check out free code camps tutorials on Python, but you need to understand the basics of this programming language, because this is what you will use to build all the models. The first thing to learn is data types. Learn about if else conditional statements, learn about for loops, how can you create functions and then learn about OOP concepts. And when you have all of these things figured out, try building some simple projects, try just rebuilding some games and see how well can you do it. And you can even take a step further and learn about the different libraries that Python really has. And that will give you a basic idea of how do you use your knowledge of Python concepts and apply it into building something in real world. 
right? And that is super important. So once you have the basic idea of Python, again, you don't need to know every single thing because I think learning in 2024 is a lot less about completing the entire textbook, knowing all the rules of the game. It's more about understanding the basics, going about with it. If you face any difficulty, error or something that you don't know, Google it, Stack Exchange. You can also just ask ChatGPT for some answers. But most important is to learn the basics and then keep moving forward. Because what will happen is you'll find it too hard to learn everything about Python. Python has just too many libraries, too many packages, too many applications. Don't focus on all of that. Just understand the basics and keep your eye on the goal, which is to become an AI engineer. The next step after learning Python is to learn about data analysis. And data analysis with Python is all about using three libraries. The first one is NumPy, second one is Pandas, and the third one is Matplotlib. NumPy will basically help you with numbers. You will be storing all the data in arrays, and then you'll have multi-dimensional arrays, which will become matrices. And then you'll be doing a lot of dot product of matrices to come up with answers. Again, this will be relevant when you'll be building the models, when you'll be coming up with parameters, when you'll be optimizing an equation. I'll talk all about that in later, but you will have to use NumPy arrays to do all of that. The second thing is Pandas. Pandas is the library which will basically help you with data which is in tabular form, right? So any data that you have stored in columns and rows, Pandas will help you get it sorted. And this is super important because any data set that you use or you make it, it's all going to be in a file called .csv, comma separated values. And you should know how to use it and how to extract data from that table, from that tabular form. And you can do that very easily with Pandas. Again, it all has functions that you can use. So it'll be like PD dot this, or the same is the case with NumPy arrays. So you create an array and then you say NP dot array, and then you perform functions on those arrays, right? That is how it works. The last library that I talked about in data analysis is going to be matplotlib. Matplotlib is really important because once you run the model, you have some outcomes, you have some answers, you have a probability and you have to showcase it. You need to show what the end result is. And that is what you do with the help of matplotlib. It's an amazing library through which you can actually plot bar charts. You can plot pie charts. You can plot various ways to represent data, right? And that is where matplotlib comes very handy. You use NumPy, you use pandas, and you use matplotlib to analyze any data set that you would be getting. So once we've learned about Python, once we learned about data analysis, the next step is to pick a framework. Now there are various frameworks which make your life easy. You can use these frameworks and you can very easily create different types of machine learning models. You can either choose PyTorch, scikit-learn or TensorFlow, or there are many others as well. But these are the three most popular ones. I would suggest you to go with PyTorch or scikit-learn because these are simpler frameworks to use as a beginner. TensorFlow just hides a lot of the beginner stuff away from you. So it might look really clean. You can just use three, four lines of code to execute something, but you won't understand the essence of what you are building. Hence, TensorFlow you can pick once you have the basic idea of building models. And TensorFlow makes it really simple. And you can quickly spin up models with the help of TensorFlow and Keras. Now, the most important thing here is to pick one framework and master it. You can find numerous tutorials on Free Code Camp about PyTorch along with scikit-learn. So you focus on learning each of these. What will basically happen is you learn about the various types of machine learning models. Essentially, there are three types of machine learning models. The first one is a supervised learning. The second one is unsupervised learning. And the last one is reinforcement learning. In supervised learning, the data that we give to the model is labeled data. So we are actually telling it that this photo is of a cat and this photo is of a dog. And when you have unsupervised learning, in that case, data is unlabeled. Right? There is no label on the data. The model can just tell that this is category A and this is category B. That is what unsupervised learning is all about. And the last thing is reinforcement learning. And reinforcement learning is all about creating an incentive for a character in a game or any environment 
and then it learns how to optimize for that number for example if you have a character in a game you create an incentive that when it walks towards a price it gains more points when it walks away from it it will lose points and hence you are basically training the model telling it that you should move closer to the price to increase your points and the goal of this game is to increase the points as much as possible so that is your reinforcement learning and these are the three main types of machine learning models that you can create now there's an amazing course on coursera that you can take by deep learning ai called as a machine learning specialization you can individually enroll and audit each of the three courses that are in that specialization for completely free and you can learn about all of these basics right so when you go through that it is i think the most popular course in machine learning so take that course and you learn the basics of supervised learning unsupervised learning along with reinforcement learning now in supervised learning you have various types you can either have regression problems or you can have a classification problem right regression is the one in which you have some data and you have to predict future data and in the case of classification as the name suggests you have to classify between two or three or more categories so you can create multiple types of models regression analysis can have logistic regression then you have polynomial regression then you have classification models along with that you also have something called as k nearest neighbors and all of these are going to help you predict something it is all going to help you train that model these are all approaches to solve a particular problem you need to choose which one is the best and when you go through different practices when you try things out a lot you will understand which model to use for which type of problem that is essentially how it works in unsupervised learning you have clustering which is called as k means clustering and then in reinforcement learning there is just one type which i have already explained to you in which you are optimizing for the number of points of that character now for reinforcement learning particularly tech with tim on youtube has a tutorial on flappy bird ai so go check that out and you will learn exactly how to build it from scratch and you will understand how can you incentivize a character which is the flappy bird to actually play the game on its own with the help of reinforcement learning so go check that out but basically once you learn the different types then you can start going deeper and building projects the next step would be to practice as much as possible with the knowledge that you now have accomplished so you go to kaggle and you start solving problems there will be data sets you take them and then you try to solve the problem that they have stated there are very famous data sets like the titanic data set the most cliched one you have cfar 10 you have mnist you have fash mnist and you can start applying all of your learnings on these data sets titanic data set would have information about the passengers on board titanic and you have to predict something the second one cfar 10 has random images of 10 different objects and animals now mnist is a collection of images which will be having numbers written in it and you have to basically build a model that recognizes those digits and lastly we have fash mnist which is going to be clothes so it should be able to identify is this a jacket is this a lower is this a cap is this a shoe things like that i hope you are understanding what i'm saying now when you are solving for mnist or fash mnist you need to learn about something called as neural networks and that is where we start our journey into deep learning right neural networks is a very interesting and fascinating concept just think of it like a layer of neurons in which you will be having inputs and outputs you are having multiple inputs you are putting that through a black box which comprises of a layer of neurons and then you have an output you are training this model to actually optimize and get the best result possible and here is where you should learn about the concept of back propagation right the next step is for you to have multiple layers of neural networks and that is deep neural networks right so you would be having multiple layers you would be having an input layer and output layer and multiple layers in the middle depending on how complex the problem is so the more random the situation is the more layers you will need to effectively solve a problem 
and that is essentially how it works you will also then have to learn about something called as hyper parameters you learn about keywords like learning rate weights and biases and how do you manipulate these three numbers to get the optimal output to get the best probability for the right output so that is how it works again to learn about neural networks you can check out this amazing tutorial by andre kapathi on youtube it's completely free you can also check out this amazing cs50 ai course wherein they take you in the depths talking about machine learning and the neural networks so check out that part where they talk about neural networks that will open up your eyes a lot so once you know about neural networks the next step then is to move to the next thing which is called a cnn convolutional neural networks which will again be discussed in the cs50 artificial intelligence course so you will learn how do you use images and you classify between images see an image is built up of pixels and each pixel has a rgb value red green and blue so this will be having three values on one pixel and there can be let's just say 1080 into 1920 now think of these pictures in a data set which is labeled so it says that this is a dog, this is a cat and you're feeding it into a neural network and hence you would basically create a neural network which looks sort of like this and this is the idea of CNN, convolutional neural networks. Again, what happens in between is the black box and your model will try to understand the patterns and will optimize those weights and biases and learning rate and epochs and everything to come up with the accurate outcome and the more you train it the better the outcome will become so that is essentially how that works you will learn about cnn the next step is up to you you can learn about nlp natural language processing you can also learn about rnns and there's an amazing course by hugging face on nlp that you can check out and get started with that so now that you've learned the basics of deep learning deep neural networks convolutional neural networks the next step is for you to start tinkering around with chat GPT and generative AI. You can now perfectly start building AI tools because you have the basic underlying knowledge of how these neural networks really work. The next step is to check out deep learning AI's tutorials on chat GPT. The first one is about how chat GPT works. You'll understand how large language models operate and you'll also learn about the art of prompt engineering. That will get you started. They have other courses as well, which talk in depth about using the OpenAI APIs to build your own models from scratch. It also talks about how do you build a large language model from scratch? How do you customize a large language model? How do you use tools like LangChain to actually use models in any particular environment so there's lots of things that you can explore now check out deeplearning.ai they have some amazing short courses that you can take to learn the basics of large language models you can learn about how do you deploy these models how do you take advantage of the existing tools like hugging face and chat gpt and stable diffusion and mid journey and others to build your own tool on top of it you can also explore the chat gpt documentation to learn more about how does it really work and what you can do with it you can do the same with other tools like hugging face like langchain and others and that will give you a perspective on how do you build with these tools from scratch the next step is for you to learn about chat gpt plugins and the gpt store now this is an amazing opportunity it's like the app store from the 2008 in which you would basically be able to build and train your own custom gpt you can launch it and people would pay you to get access to those gpts again you will have to customize these gpts you will have to learn the art of prompt engineering and that is how you can build on top of chat gpt on the gpt store so that is what you need to learn if you want to become an artificial intelligence engineer in 2024 there's a lot more to learn you are just getting started description will have a ton of resources that you can take and get started in your journey of becoming an ai engineer if you have any questions let me know below in the comment section but this is how you do it in 2024 learn about python then python libraries then learn about machine learning then learn about neural networks and then finally learn about nlp and then go into llms and start building your own generative ai applications 
Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, let me know below in the comments. If you're still watching right in the comment section, I was till the very end. You can also click a screenshot and post this on social media and tag me at Ishan Sharma 7390. I will catch you in the next video.